And the title of today's talk is Saint Peter Julio I Mart as a predecessor of Padre Pio. And here we're going to be having a look at the similarities and the differences between their lives. This is the first part of a two part series. <laughs> Hello friends of Following Padre Pio. On this channel we bring you a series of short stories on the incredible life of our great saint Padre Pio. He was a Capuchin friar, mystic, a tremendous miracle worker. Do stay tuned to find out more about Padre Pio and what his intercession could do for you. A reminder that we do have a Lenten selection of videos and to see our Lenten selection just go to the video description below click on the link through to the Lenten selection it's that easy please do view these videos and they change each week and we encourage everyone be part of our Padre Pio apostolate by liking the video share the video with your friends and colleagues Saint Peter Imart was born of the second marriage between the widower Giulio Aymar to Maria Magdalena Perlosi. And they were blessed with several children. But our Lord really tested their strong Catholic faith because of the period of just five years they lost seven of their children, several of them while still very, very young. But then, perhaps by way of consolation and compensation, Peter Giulio, our first saint, was born. And that was on the 4th of February, 1811, in the town of La Meur. Now, Padre Pio was born, as we know, in Petrocina, the town of Petrocina, 25th of May, 1887. So there's not quite 80 years, around about that, between them. And also, Padre Pio was born into quite a numerous family, several siblings, and likewise, many of the siblings died while they were still very young. But both saints were of quite humble origins. And what was very important, what was critical, they were born into families that were marked by profound religiosity. So we're just going to have a look at the, the devout families, the devout families right now. In the case of St. Peter Imart, in his devout family, Peter Julio was attracted from a very young age to all of the relig religious aspects in life. For instance, his mother was a daily mass attendee and she would take young Peter along with her every day and they would bliss, bl visit the Blessed Sacrament. And by all indications, the young boy was very happy with this, to partake in this. There was also a pious custom in Lemur in which um, there was a blessing with the Holy Sacrament so that people could have a good death in the future. And Mary Magdalena took the baby to, to this particular blessing. And there, during the blessing, she offered her child up during the benediction, pleading with the Lord to please bless her son. So she made this particular offering to God. And just looking at penances, while Peter Imart was still young, he was now healthy and he was growing well. And his mother at this stage introduced him a little bit by, at a time to this idea of penances, but only on Fridays. So on Fridays, instead of placing him in his very comfortable crib, she would place him on the straw. As she wanted for, to him to learn to imitate our Lord, to imitate the passion of our Lord, even by these very small little mortifications, just to get him used to that concept of somehow from a very young age, just partaking in our Lord's sufferings. And so for both mothers, that is Padre Pio's mother, Donna Pepper, too. She also played a vital role, a very important role, in the religious formation of her children. Donna Pepa pointed, certainly pointed the way to the Most High for young Francesco, for young Padre Pio, from when he was very, very young too. In terms of their devotion to the Eucharist while they were still young, um, St. Peter Imart, with the death of his mother, it now fell onto the shoulders of his sisters, his siblings, were going to help form him. And what happened one day when he was just five years old, the little boy suddenly disappeared. They searched everywhere. They could not find him. And then one of the sisters had this inspiration. Perhaps he's in the church. So they went and looked in the church. And there, this is what they found. This is, this is how it is recorded. It is known that at age five, he was found praying while on a ladder behind the tabernacle at church. Why, they asked him. Because I can listen to him better that way, he said. 
So a strong attraction to the Eucharist within the tabernacle. And similarly, with Padre Pio, more than once, the young Francesco, he'd just disappear, and then he'd be found waiting outside the steps of the church. Even though the doors were closed, he would be waiting there, waiting for the church to open, so that he could go inside, and there he could worship our blessed Lord in the Eucharist. So we can see the strong attraction to the Eucharist from young for both of them. And then on the path to their vocations for Peter um, Julio Aymart, the path of divine providence en route to making him the apostle of the devotion to the Eucharist, it went through many twists and turns. It wasn't just a clear, direct route. He sensed that he had a religious vocation. And so because of that, he decided to join the Oblates of Mary Immaculate, the OMIs as they are called. They were a recently formed foundation specifically for the education of youth and for the rural mission. And the OMIs, they were growing well. They had just sent their first missionaries to Oceania, to Australia, New Zealand, and those areas. And there were these two distinct signs in both of our great saints' lives. And that is the love of the Most Holy Eucharist first, and also the love of Our Lady, the Mother of Jesus. St. Julio Aymot, as soon as he could enter the religious congregation, he chose one that was dedicated to the Holy Virgin. And Padre Pio, he chose the Franciscan habit, following the rule of that order, which had defended from the very outset the dogma of the Immaculate Conception. So in both orders, Our Lady was important. They both made a profound impression on people. In the case of Peter Imart, in his congregation, Peter performed many little functions, various functions, including care for the poor and the sick. And he did this in such a way that he became known as the Holy One amongst people. And then some fruit, an example that led on from that. One day in, in the city of Lyon, he was walking there, there was an, an anarchist revolution, this was 1848. Peter Imart was walking along the city streets when he came across a group of revolutionaries. So these revolutionaries were secularists and they were strongly anti-clerical. And one of them saw the priest and shouted, what a priest around here. And then the rest joined in, throw the priest into the Rhone, into the river. And together they all came forward to grab the priest to throw him into the river. But at that moment, one of the revolutionaries realized who it was and shouted, but this is Father Imart. And when they heard his name, when they all heard his name, they stopped dead in their tracks. And then they turned and they shouted, Viva Padre Imart. They hoisted him up onto their shoulders and triumphantly took him back to his monastery. You can see the influence and the impact he had on these people. And we can see that both saints had a strong desire to save souls. This is what inspired them and drove them on to do great works for those in need. For Padre Pio, even though he was in his cloistered life, in his, up there in, the, in a monastery in the hills, nevertheless, he was able to build one of the best hospitals in Italy. And Padre Pio really mirrored the lifestyle, shining like Christ himself, making Christ much loved by everyone, and thereby saving our Lord from many unjust persecutions. And that is the end of part one. Next time we're going to continue looking at the similarities and the differences between St. Peter Julio Imart and Padre Pio. So please do join us next time. And we do have a Lenten selection of videos. Just go to the video description below and click through to the link through to our Lenten selection of videos. And we'd really like to make a special mention to thank our protected child of Padre Pio patrons for your support for making all of these videos possible for everyone. And anyone who wants to join the protected child of Padre Pio patrons, please just see the video on the end screen and that will describe how you can join. Mm -hmm.